How's it going everybody? Rybread here and today we're about to start season three. Uh, now in at the end of last video I showed you guys the lines and asked you guys to make some recommendations. Um, after looking at everything I decided to make a couple changes of my own. <clears throat> Gregory Campbell was uh, our fourth line center but Marcus Foligno's got a decent face-off so I think he's actually got the same face-off rating and he's listed as a fourth line forward so he'll play perfectly along with Delorier and Carrier. I know Kyrie is listed as a minor scoring forward, but I want him to grow and have some decent gro decent growth. And I think he's got uh, decent enough uh, individual skills where he can still do something there on that fourth line. And maybe he'll jump a couple overall points to where maybe Baptiste is at an 83 is what I'd like to see from him. Uh, and then here you can see on our third line, Gergensen is still on the wing. Uh, he's just playing left wing with Benino and Baptiste, which I think is a pretty good line. Uh, some physical guys with decent... Uh, categories and then on our second line Johan Larson who's now an 85 he's not listed as a second line forward yet but he is playing on that second line for us his awareness isn't bad his uh, passing could be better his shot is all right so maybe we could upgrade him um, uh, through it later on in the season but I think an 85 is fine obviously we have Ryan O'Reilly who's now officially listed as a second line forward so we don't have to worry about him complaining about ice time which is nice to see and then Evander Kane is also a second line forward. So I think our second line is actually pretty decent. Actually, O'Reilly's skating is now only an 84. Uh, so I think he's dropping in his skating category. And then our first line is Reinhardt, Eichel, and Ocposo. And Eichel and Reinhardt are just raw at this point. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sam Reinhardt's, all most of his categories are way up there, except for his physical. And I think that's the only thing holding him back from being where Jack Eichel is overall-wise. Now, Jack Eichel's passing and his shot are absolutely incredible. I was thinking about making uh, Eichel a sniper. Uh, not too sure if I want to do that or not. I don't want to screw up everything. But we already have Reinhardt, who's a better passer. And Ocposo is a power forward. So I think if I can make Eichel a sniper, I think he'll take off this season and have a really, really good season. Uh, we'll go ahead and see his stats of years past. So he had 42 points in 60 games and then 63 points in 76 games. Uh, he really hasn't put in a lot of goals. Last season was really good for him. I think this was when he started to uh, uh, play on the first line. He doesn't have a really high shooting percentage, so I'm actually going to go ahead and make him a sniper and see if that changes anything. Uh, defensively here, uh, nothing much has changed except Jake Bean is now listed as a top four defenseman. Uh, he's still behind Kulikov and Bogosian, though, just because his uh, physical category is pretty bad. For an offensive defenseman, his defensive awareness is up at 89 and offensive awareness only at 78. Uh, I think is I think that's pretty good. I don't know uh, if I can get his offensive awareness to grow if he has a good season. Uh, he only played 12 games on the team last year uh, up in the NHL. We can't find his stats otherwise. So maybe if he's got a good offensive year, uh, that offensive awareness will increase. But his skating is just absolutely amazing. I, might have, I think I might have touched on this on the last video. 97 speed with 94 acceleration and 99 agility. It's just unbelievable. His shot is great. His puck control is also great. I, I'd like to see his passing get up there, so therefore we could get uh, some points, some assists. But his shot, I think he'll be a goal-scoring offensive defenseman if, I, if looking at that shooting category uh, tells me anything. Again, these two guys getting up there. Uh, they... They aren't really uh, coming off a contract, so I can't. I don't know if I'll be able to trade them away. Maybe I will. And then I just noticed that I think Ryan Miller actually retired, so Scott Wedgwood is now our backup. Uh, I think I might trade him away for like a seventh round pick or something, uh, just because I think I can go sign a better backup goaltender. Or maybe if somebody's got a backup goaltender on the block, uh, I'm going to go look at free agency right now just to see if, because that's just an easier, easier way to do it. Uh, than trading because you have to give up assets when you trade because I don't think I'm going to get somebody better than him uh, straight up. Uh, let's see his trade value first. So we're listed as a contender. I just caught that down there. So that's exciting to see uh, that once again, we're a contender that I didn't ruin the team. So yeah, Wedgwood's got almost no trade value. I could maybe get a seventh, but that's probably it. Um, let's go here to free agents and see if we got any better backup goaltenders out there. Uh, so, actually, uh, well, Henestroza, never mind, he's a, a restricted free agent. I was going to say that he could be somebody that I could sign uh, as I think he's a two-way forward. Uh, he's actually a playmaker. He's got, <laughs> he's really good. 
Uh, I don't want to give up picks for him, though. Uh, he's listed as a third-line scoring forward. He's basically the same thing as Johan Larson, uh, except he could grow just a little bit. But he wants $3.4 million, and I don't have that kind of money to spend. Uh, let's see. We got, we're going to go to goalies here, see if there's any better backup goalies than an 80 overall. So Craig Anderson is still out there, uh, and Yaroslav Halak is still out there. So these two guys... I don't know if I'll be able to sign them. I mean, I could try and sign Anderson for 1.5. Just throw a contract out there, but I don't think he would accept that. Same thing with Yaroslav Halak. Um, these two guys, they want big money in their starters, so they might get signed. But I'm going to offer him as much as I can for one year. Uh, he's probably going to say hell no to that. So I'm going to have to um, find somebody via trade or just stick with Wedgwood for now. Uh, I think in the previous seasons, a big key was our backup goaltending, and it was terrible, so we weren't winning as many games as we should. And then when I acquired Ryan Miller, all of a sudden we started to be one of the elite teams in the league. So backup goaltending actually does matter, uh, but uh, I don't know how much uh, I'm willing to give up just to get a decent backup goaltender. Let's go ahead and simulate through the preseason here, see if Craig Anderson accepts or declines. He's rejected. Yeah, I mean... I was expecting that one to happen. Um, let me go check the uh, trade block. I don't think I saw any backup goaltenders, but maybe if somebody wants to give up a goaltender, uh, I can trade with them and hopefully get a better backup goaltender than 80 overall. I kind of let that one slip through. I completely forgot, so there might have been some backup goal goalies that I could have signed that you know were better than... An 80 overall, and I just kind of forgot to look at the goalies who uh, goalies who uh, retired last season. So oh, Mike Smith is listed as a backup. He's got low trade value, except he's got he's got a ridiculous contract. So I don't want to take that on. Uh, Six million for one season for a backup goaltender is not something I want. Um, let's see who's willing to give away their goalie, a goalie anyway. So nope, he's a 66. He's not going to be a good backup for us. Uh, Rodrigue, what's his first name? Olivier Rodrigue. Uh, he looks to have, I don't know why his trade value is so high. He's only listed as a fringe starter and he's a 58 at 18. I mean, he should be able to get into the 70s by the time he's 20, but um, not the kind of guy we're looking for right now. Niemi is basically the same as Scott Wedgwood, um, so it's it's not worth it. Wedgwood says he's going to grow, but he's basically 20, he's, I think he's 26, so he's basically done growing. Uh, the only thing that's going to change is morale, and that's about when you solidify yourself as a goaltender in the NHL, is when you become 26, 27, so he's not going to grow much for us. Um, so yeah, nope, nobody yet uh, that I can see. Oops, I hit the wrong button. So we were on the Rangers, got to double check that now. I wish I could, I, I don't know if you guys remember last gen when you were able to just uh, do a trade block search and just see teams or just see players that fit the requirements that you had. So Neuverth is actually, looks like a, a decent, back, uh, he would be a really good backup in my opinion. Uh, he's, he's listed as a backup goaltender, he's an 84 overall, he's not very expensive, he's 30 years of age. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can find somebody else though, I know Robin Lehner is on the trade block. He's got two years at five million though, so that's so it looks it, it looks like Neuverth is the kind of guy that we'd like to go out and acquire. He's the, he's got that perfect contract for a backup role. He's got the perfect overall for a backup. He doesn't have too high of a trade value. Uh, the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs just signed Martin Jones and not want to trade him away. Um, that's that's hilarious. Uh, let's go back here to the Flyers. Go see if we can acquire Neuverth. Oh, not deep. Not, uh, I was like, Rick DiPietro. No, that's, that's I think it's, is it Mike DiPietro? Yeah, Michael DiPietro. But we're going to acquire Michael Neuverth. Let's see if we can give them anything. Do they want a prospect or something that I can give away? So nothing really here that looks like something that I'd want to give away. I mean, I could package Hudson Fashing together or not because they don't want that. <laughs> Uh, let's let's just give them Scott Wedgwood as another backup option. I know they don't want him technically, but 
Uh, we might actually have to give up a uh, draft pick for this. They want our third as well. I don't think that's going to go through, so I'd have to definitely add another prospect that is probably unsigned prospect. I think I've signed most of our prospects, though, with any trade value. There's this top six defender. I don't know if I want to trade him away. Maybe I can give them a guy like uh, Wingerly. Maybe that would go through. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I'm not near the... So maybe I'll give them a prospect goaltender, too. Somebody who's not going to be all that great. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and give them this guy. I don't, I don't. All right. This is, this is annoying. I just want Michael Neuwirth. <laughs> just give him to me. Uh, we got a whole bunch of bottom six forwards here. So I might be able to sweeten the deal just a little bit by giving them one of these bottom six forwards. Uh, let's see if I if this would go through. I think this would probably go through. Yeah, that would go through. So since I know it will go through, let's see if I can get maybe a fourth round pick back. Because I know they want to give that up. It's quite close to fair value, so maybe I'll go ahead and get a fifth instead. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and go through with that. We traded our third round pick for Michael Neuwirth. So I think, yeah, I think we're all set. I think we just have to edit the lines really quickly and put Neuwirth in. Hopefully the season isn't as injury riddled as last season. I remember uh, last video, or last season video, uh, I had to do a lot of line changes because of injuries. So hopefully we don't have that kind of injury bug. Um, also, maybe we can trade some of these players for picks. I know I give up picks a lot, but we aren't really the kind of team that's going to build through the draft anymore. We've got a solid foundation and a solid core. We're just waiting on a couple players that are going to be decent players. Um, I wouldn't trade away players too quick. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why GM rep matters anymore. I don't know why they talk about that because I've never seen it actually play a role um, in in this game you can't see your GM rep so if they want to add that in there where you can bring the phone back and the GM tracker uh, I'm all for that because that was interesting to see the year-over-year -year improvement uh, let's see we'll go ahead here and scout the WHL forwards for a month I only like to do a month because I think you still scout them enough and six weeks is actually more than people realize um, you don't need to scout uh, players for um, six weeks I think a month will be just fine you'll get a decent uh, look at who they are. You won't get the exact everything. So it's going to be a weak draft class. Interesting. So trading away our third round pick might not have been the worst thing in the world to do. We got a fifth round pick back though. So we'll get uh, some bottom six forward. Uh, hopefully maybe an AHL top six. Uh, I think we are salary cap compliant. But now the regular season is upon us. Let me go ahead and turn on injuries because I know I turn them off every season for the the preseason, because I don't want anybody getting hurt in the preseason. I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, it, it, it may be more realistic that way, but it's just annoying because I keep using Crosby or Ovechkin. But if one of those guys got injured with a concussion and missed the first month of the season for their team, that would really affect the way everything simulates. So now injuries are on for the regular season, and we'll see how everything goes that way. Um, they don't miss time because they did because they got injured in the preseason, but instead they got injured in the regular season. So we'll go ahead and simulate the first month here, see how we do. I think we're going to take a step back this uh, this um, this year. I know we were one of the top. Oh, okay, so Zach Bogosian's already hurt. I think we have a defenseman scratch though that we can go ahead and put in. Uh, we don't actually, so I'm going to have to go call players up. Um. And then I'll have to edit the lines just a little bit. I haven't really touched the other lines as far as um, special teams and whatnot go. We'll call him up. We can send. We can actually, I think, send. Uh, actually, I'll leave those guys up here. Uh, I mean, the the guys that are scratched. I did a lot of editing down in the AHL, so maybe if the AHL actually, uh, if the AHL actually. Um, somebody gets injured down there, I'll have to actually go do that manually instead. So now Jake Bean is playing here. He didn't. He recorded a shot in the first game. 
I don't even know if we won or lost our first game. Um, I'll go ahead and edit these lines down here. We're going to put these guys here. And then we'll go ahead and replace him with... Um, I think Martin actually has some potential. Uh, wait, what? Alright, I'm just looking for a guy that has some kind of potential. I don't think anybody has potential, so we'll just put in Martin just because he's the best uh, available. I guess he was an extra attacker, Falk was, down in the AHL. <laughs> so let me go ahead and put Alex Nylander here because I think Nylander uh, needs, he needs to have a good season and needs to grow. He's listed as low elite and he's getting towards his mid-20s. Or, well, not mid-20s. He just turned 20, but um, a shootout win to start. So I'll take the two points. Uh, first first game is a win. Uh, as I was saying about Nylander, I want him to grow. He, he definitely needs to uh, uh, reach that potential for us because we definitely need another winger to be on the top. Um, on the top, uh, top, top six, uh, because I, I like Larson, but I would rather see Larson on the, uh, third line. And then we get hammered by both Colorado and St. Louis. So yeah, I don't think this is going to be <laughs> the kind of season that we had last year. Although you never know, I could make a trade for a guy like Michael Camilleri or Adam Henrique or not Henrique. There's some players on the trade block that have, uh, got that second line forward, um, player role, but as I say that, we go ahead and win two straight. Uh, let's go ahead and go to roster moves. We'll send we'll send those guys down. That shouldn't be up here. Uh, Zalewski, Campbell, Falk. We'll, we'll leave Peary up here. And we'll go to edit lines now. Best lines. Uh, hopefully, we don't have a ton of injuries, like I said. So, yeah, now Jake Bean is back there on that third defensive pairing. Hopefully, we can keep winning games. Another shootout win. I'll take it. I'd like to get to seven wins. I mean, or maybe six wins. I'd like to win the two of the next three. Uh, so, we go ahead and shut out Tampa Bay, and we're now six and two. So, that's nice to see. Go ahead and scout forwards in the O for a month. Because that's only 11%. Another 2-0 shutout win. There we go, and a 4-3 shutout win. That's what I like to see. Uh, Jack Eichel wants to talk. So apparently he's doing really well this season. Two goals, he's got 10 points, and I think we've played 10 games, so he's right now point per game. Um, I'll, he doesn't like demanding, and I know Evander Kane likes calming. So I think Eichel is also another player that likes calming. Uh, we're 7-2, and two, so Eichel's got two goals and eight assists in... Nine games, so that's 10 points in nine games. I was going to change him to a sniper, so I think I'm still going to do that. But I hope, hopefully it doesn't all of a sudden have a ripple effect where our team starts to play poorly. Uh, he's got a five-star um, shooting category, so I think making him a sniper on that first line I think will be much more effective, although I don't know how much more effective than seven and two you can get. Um, <laughs> Uh, just I think I think our first line will start to put in a lot of points if we got that power forward playmaker sniper uh, combination. So early on in the season, we are first in the division and we're playing the second place team in the division right here against uh, the Florida Panthers. I know it's nine games, so I'm not going to bother checking the stats or progress reports. We'll go ahead and go another month and then I'll go ahead and check the progress reports. So we'll get up here to December. I think I noticed a lot of Western Conference games. Um... I'm liking the way the injuries are happening. We only had one actual injury that I had to change something for. A 6-3 loss against the Panthers. So they're going to be a tough matchup for us all year. Sort of like the Ottawa Senators were last year. Hopefully we can beat the Coyotes. We did. Uh, we got a lot of rest and a lot of uh, back half of the week games here. So Vancouver, a 5-2 win against Vancouver. How is Washington this season? Because uh, I know they're always a good team. Uh, I guess I'm not going to be able to see 11-3-1, so they're really good. Uh, these are the teams we need to beat, though. A 4-2 loss. Let's see if we can beat a lowly Carolina Hurricanes. And we shut them out 4-0. Uh, Winnipeg, 6-8-1, so I think we can handle them. 7-2, we did. Um, Ottawa, 
what is Ottawa? Six, seven, and three. So they, they're taking a serious step back. We beat them 5-1. So these divisional games, I like to see teams in our division take a step back. I know the Atlantic is a relatively weak conference, but Tampa Bay is actually 10-7-1. So they're not that bad this season. We lost to them. See, we're, we're, we're feasting on these lower teams. Uh, hopefully we can beat New Jersey 6-1. And then the Rangers 5-4. There we go. 15-5-0. and um, Oh, I forgot to play the players down in the AHL. It's okay. Uh, Falk is just a 7th D-man anyway. Shootout win against Columbus. Um, so yeah, we're, we had a really good month, actually. Just a couple losses here and there. Um, let's go ahead and... So we have A-minus accuracy in America, but in Canada, we only have a B, which is unfortunate because that's where a lot of the prospects come from. So I would have liked to see it give us an A for accuracy there. Justin Falk has lost morale because of ice time because he's not playing. And then we go ahead and get back-to-back... Western Conference wins, so we're 17-5 and five early on in the season. We are flying out of the gates, five points ahead of the next best team in the uh, conference. Uh, we now have 92 offense, 92 defense, and 84 goalie, but 84 goalie is probably because Michael Neu Neuverth is starting. Uh, I don't know why we went up. Oh, Gergensen's grew uh, by one, or maybe it's just because of his morale, but I'll take it. Benino's up by one as well. Delorier is up by one because he's probably happy. And then defensively, Fowler's now up to an 88. Risto's a 91. Jake Bean's still an 84. So our top, our top, it seems to be like our top guys are getting it done. Eichel's got, uh, uh, let's see, is that 26 points in 19 games? Oh my God. Did I do the math right? Or it's 22 games. Uh, yeah, so our first line is actually pouring it on. Uh, third line's actually doing really well. And the fourth line, Carrier on that fourth line has got eight goals and four assists. All right, so I'll just go ahead and view the stats uh, normally. I'll go ahead and edit Rochester's lines, and then uh, I'll be back uh, after we go ahead and check out the stats really quickly. So right now, Kyle Poso has got 27 points in 22 games, uh, followed closely by Jack Eichel, who's got 26 points in 22 games. So he had two goals and eight assists. He's now gotten 5 goals and 11 assists since then. Uh, Reinhardt is also a point-per-game player, so our first line is really taken off. They're all point-per-game players. Uh, for, let's just go forwards. Ryan O'Reilly, Benino, Kane. So Larson's not doing too hot on that second line, although uh, Benino is picking up some slack. Carrier is going off. He's almost got 10 goals already this season. He's second on the team in goals there on that fourth line which is really interesting to see. Delorier's got nine assists. These guys are probably getting points because Carrier's putting the puck in the net. Um, I don't know, what's his average time on ice? Uh, <laughs> I wanna see how, how he's doing all of this. Uh, I guess I can check that in the, in the progress reports uh, right after I finish this up. 25% shooting percentage, so I think he's gonna come back down to earth. I don't think it's possible for him to keep that kind of pace up. Um, let's go ahead and check out our defenseman points. Rasmus Ristolainen. Three goals, five assists. Fowler, Kulikov, then Bean. Uh, Bogosian, McCabe. Uh, let's go ahead and check out our goaltending. See, Matt Murray has got a 924 save percentage, and Neuverth is 931. So, Neuverth is 4 and 1. He's got a sub 2.0 goal against average, and Matt Murray's got a 2.21 goal against average. So, I'm really happy with everything about this, how this team is going right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and edit the lines down in Rochester, so give me a minute. All right, everybody, so here we are. Uh, these are the AHL lines. Um, I tried to get as many potential players in here as possible. As you can see, Nylander here, uh, Olofsson, uh, I guess Campbell's on the first line. I was actually thinking about moving McNeely up there, uh, but I want these guys to have a good season, so Bailey's there, Hudson Fashing, Asplund, McNeely, Makinen, uh, Gustav Posler, uh, Zykerlis, or Zykels, Zykers, Martin Zyker, Zyker, Zykels, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, he's got low top nine, so I tried to play anybody who's got potential. Cal Foot here, obviously we know about him. Low elite potential. Falk is now in. Gooley is actually growing pretty decently. He's going to be a slow potential uh, grower, so he could get up into the mid to low 80s. So, so far, everybody's looking like they're growing pretty well, but actually, let's go ahead and check that out for sure. Campbell is losing uh, morale rapidly uh, and overall. Uh, Falk is not happy. He's, 
He's disappointed in his ice time, but that's okay. He's in the AHL. We'll go ahead and check out the um, progress report for the players early on in the season. I know we're only 22 games into the season, but I want to see if anybody uh, from our young squad has grown at all. Or maybe even Eichel or Reinhardt have grown just a little bit. So it doesn't appear that anybody in the NHL is growing. So nobody in the NHL is growing. <laughs> uh, and then we have some decent growth down in the AHL. Nylander also uh, is not growing very much. So that's interesting to see. James Porter Jr. Cal Foote's growing a little bit. So it's still early on in the season to see any kind of significant growth. But I just wanted to check and see how people were doing. Uh, our captain, Jack Eichel, uh, I'm really happy with how he's doing, especially as a younger player. I know that uh, you need veterans on your roster to do decently in the playoffs, but I think he's uh, performing really well. So we'll go ahead and simulate here through December up to January 1st. Uh, if I don't think I need to make any trades, I won't, and we can actually get through to the end of the season. This might be a longer video if I just keep it all the way through to the end of the season. 3-1 win, there we go. That's three straight against the Western Conference. Can we make it four straight when we play St. Louis? Um, they're a good team, but we're just a little bit better. There we go, 2-1 win. Uh, Fowler's not happy because of locker room interactions. Campbell's game morale because of ice time, so he should go back up. He should be around an 80, a 5-3 win. Okay, so there's another. There's our first loss in uh, five games, but then we pick it right back up with a 3 nothing shutout against Anaheim. So people want to talk with me. Um, Nick Bonino, he's thankful for the extra minutes, so he doesn't care about demanding, so he might be num uh, number one option or number four option kind of guy. I don't think he's going to want to meet with me too much this season. Edmonton and Connor McDavid, we beat them 5-2, to two, so we're putting in a lot of goals. I'd like to check the, uh, the stats of the team stats, so we lose to Carolina, who is one of the lesser teams. Uh, we'll just go ahead and assistant coach replaces player down there in the AHL. Uh, versus Calgary, a 3-2 win. So when we lose, we bounce right back. Uh, it's kind of nice to see that we don't go on any kind of serious losing skid. A 2-1 win against Minnesota, then a 6-2 loss versus Edmonton. So we'll go ahead and put Rodriguez back in uh, over Tim Kennedy. Just because Rodriguez actually has a little bit of a potential. Zalewski, uh, yeah. Yeah, Rodriguez is the guy I'd like to see in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and keep simulating here. So I gotta edit the scouting assignment really quickly. Uh, we'll we'll do a uh, no because there's not a lot of potential prospects there. Um, let's see here. We'll just go ahead and scout the SHL for three weeks because there's only twelve. I think we'll just go ahead and do two weeks because there's only twelve prospects there. Uh, we're only three games away. I'd like to see us get to at least 25 wins. And still people want to talk to me. So Nick Bonino. Uh, we're on a roll. We'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do motivating. He likes motivating. Okay, so we found that one out. Because I, I never like the asserting or assertive uh, um, selection. 4-1 win, 5-4 shootout win. Um, let's see here. Let's keep it going here. Montreal, a 3-2 loss, so that's an in in interdivision loss. But we got to 26-9 uh, at the halfway point of the season. Stat Central here. We'll go ahead and check out the stats. Jack Eichel's got 38. Let's go ahead and check out the stats really quickly here. So Jack Eichel and Ocposo are both point per game. That first line is really getting it done. Um... Benino, I think, is actually getting more points than Larson just because Benino is getting that second-line power play time. Goal-wise, Ocposo, uh, Kane, Reinhardt, and then Eichel. Eichel's getting a lot of assists even as a sniper, so I'm okay with that. His shooting percentage has gone up slightly. Uh, still not too fantastic, but, I mean, his shooting category is five stars. Is just Yeah, he's just a beast. Um, <laughs> Ryan O'Reilly is actually doing really well on that second line. He's actually, the as he should be, the fourth highest point getter on the team. Uh, Carrier cooled off a lot. He had eight goals in those first, uh, I think it was 10 games or so, but now he's only got, he hasn't gotten a goal since. But Delore and Felino are still getting points. Um, let's go ahead and check out defensemen now. So Risto and Fowler are still the top two point getters and Bean. And so we, we're not getting a lot of points from our defensemen, but goaltending wise, 
go ahead and check this out. Three shutouts and one shutout. Still fantastic save percentages. Uh, I think Murray's actually went up. It's now a 9.23, and Neuwirth, I think, went up by 0.001. So now he's at 9.35. So we'll go ahead here. Wow, he lessened his goal against average even more. And yeah, we're just having fantastic goaltending. Um, Baptiste is a rookie, and Bean is a rookie, so they're doing okay. Uh, rookie skaters. Nylander's got 27 points down there in the AHL, so that's nice to see. Cal Foote's got 16 points, now up to an 80 overall. Um, so, oh shoot, I left it on the AHL. So we'll continue. I don't think I need to make any serious trades. Uh, I'll go ahead and check out the league standings. We've got a lead on Detroit by four points. Um, yeah, so... And we got actually four games in hand on Detroit, and they've got their four points behind us. So um, if we can, we're actually putting ourselves in a really, really good position. So we'll go ahead and check out the entire league. So we're third in the league, but we again we have four points and three points in or three games in hand on both the Capitals and the Penguins. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of games in hand, which I think we should be able to, which should be winnable. Let's go ahead. Goals four per game. We are. Uh, I think we're in the top. Yep, we're in the we're fifth place in the league in goals for per game, and then goals against per game. We are the second best team in the league in goals against per game. So this team looks pretty dominant to me. I mean, top five in goals for and second best in goals against. How's our power play? So we're on the power play the least in the NHL, and our power play is middle of the road. So I think that's okay with me. Uh, let's go ahead and time shorthanded. Uh, is are we not yeah so we're middle of the road but our penalty killing percentage is decent we're in the top part of the league again and yeah so there are the team stats i don't see any glaring issues with this team um we're 35 games through the season so we'll go ahead and keep going here i don't think i need to really stop unless something terrible happens and we go on a, a immense losing streak so we'll go ahead and simulate up to the All-Star break. Hopefully we can get more wins and uh, use those four games in hand wisely. Uh, we, so we just dropped a huge 6-1 loss to Columbus. Uh, hopefully we can bounce back. 3-1 uh, loss to the Rangers. and But then we bounce back with a 4-2 win against a divisional opponent. So that's so it was kind of upsetting to see us lose two in a row. But then we bounced right back and we're able to... Uh, able to win one against a, a, a tough divisional opponent. Uh, I think the Lightning are kind of up there. I don't really care about trade proposals. Let's see if we can actually win a game against Pittsburgh, who is one of the top teams in the NHL, who we need to catch if we want to get a President's Trophy. A 4-3 win. Let's see if we can beat Toronto, an up-and-coming team. We lose to them. Okay, see, I'd rather not win the President's Trophy, but win the division and handle all of these. Oh, my God. So Matt Murray is hurt. Uh, I think it's just for a week. They blurred out the background, but it's just for eight days. So I'm going to have to go ahead and call somebody up from the AHL. Um, Linus Allmark. Go ahead and call him up, and then we'll go to edit the lines uh, really quickly and put him in as the backup. Um, yeah, everyone in the AHL is upset because Allmark left, but... We needed him up here. Down in the AHL, They, I think they have a goalie issue. So we'll put Johansson in there. And then whoever this guy is, I don't even... I think he's just some guy that we had to sign. John Muse. I think I actually remember him from last year, believe it or not. 5-2 win against Florida. There we go. Let's see if we can beat Pittsburgh again. We win 4-1. to one. So these are, these are the top teams in the NHL we're playing this month. Uh, I see Toronto's up there with a good record. We beat them. I'd like to see us do well against top-level teams. I'm actually going to wait until Matt Murray's fully healthy uh, to play him. And hopefully he doesn't... Oh, come on, stop the sim... I pressed B on the 22nd, and we didn't. it didn't stop. So we lost to... I don't want to say that's the only reason why we lost to uh, the, um, the Canadians, but... Okay, so let's see. We got an important team meeting against be just because they are a good team. And yeah, Jack Eichel and Kane don't like the demanding approach, but the rest of the team does, or the majority of the team does anyway. So we'll go ahead and do that one. I'll send Linus Allmark back down, put in Matt Murray. 
Uh, so yeah, Larson's actually an 86. I don't know if that's from morale or if that's from his uh, just natural growth. I, I, I think it's from morale more, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to see it be from natural growth. So we'll go ahead and here, uh, goalie-wise, minus Allmark. He might have he might have started the last game, which is why we lost. We'll go ahead and let me actually check that out. He played one game, made 14 saves, let in over four goals per game. Yeah, so that's the reason why we lost was Allmark actually started that game against the Canadians. So unfortunately, we don't have a lot of depth goaltending-wise. That might be something I have to look out for. Um, I might have to, because we did draft a goalie who's got the starter potential, but he isn't doing a ton, uh, I don't think, down here in the minors. Uh, he's not even in the minors, never mind. I haven't signed him yet because I don't think, I, he hasn't been worth it to me. He hasn't grown enough. Um, we're 45 games through the season, so we'll check out how players have grown now that we're halfway through. I like to see player growth. It's just kind of fun for me to watch players grow. So time on ice, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Eichel's got 18 minutes. Akposo and Reinhardt. So they got a lot of ice time. Nobody in the NHL is growing. And then Adam Klimi is actually growing quite a bit. Uh, Cal Foote has grown quite a bit. Now he's naturally an 80. So he's definitely a player I could see on the team. So maybe I trade away Kulikov or Bogosian and get that third round pick back. Because uh, I definitely think he's somebody that can step right in and play for us. He has no stats this season. He is playing, right? Oh, wait, is this because he's... Yeah, he's got 19 points in 40 games. Plus 10, though, so that's nice to see. Brendan Gooley's growing. Uh, I think I basically just ruined Alex Nylander. He's not going to grow whatsoever. So I could even trade away Nylander for picks because he's still got some decent trade value. Um, this this guy, Bill Flood, the low starter potential goaltender. Um... He's a 73 overall, so I don't see him growing a ton uh, and becoming a starter for us. So I might need to look at goaltender, and plus I could trade away goaltenders for picks and all that good stuff. So there's the growth. Um, I'm really upset because I think Nylander is now broken. <laughs> I ruined his development uh, by not playing him in the AHL or something like that. I don't know what I did, but I ruined his development. Hey, a 6-2 win against the Capitals. A tough, tough team to beat. And we go ahead and handle them 6-2. to two. Uh, They're actually, they have a better record than we do. Uh, I think they've played more games, though. We have yet to lose in overtime, so knock on wood. But uh, we haven't lost in overtime yet. So that's, uh, that's just straight up 66 points. And they have 73. But we've played, yeah, no, I'm not going to do the math myself. It doesn't even matter, though, at this point. Let me just continue with the simulation. We're first in the division. Let's just... We're, we're that kind of team. I don't know if any of you guys watch the NBA, but it's kind of like you just you just kind of coast through the regular season, and then you really step it up in the playoffs. A 2-0 shutout win against Nashville. Let's see if we can play Chicago. Well, I'll play them decently, anyway. A 4-3 win. There's another uh, good team that we just beat. Detroit, who's right behind us. We can't let this game go. Uh, we need to beat Detroit and Florida. Those are the two, the second and third uh, place teams. So our first and second round pick for Derek Brassard. Uh, I don't think I need Derek Brassard, honestly. He's a second line forward and he's an 87 overall. So, I mean, he's that kind of player that I would like to get. But I don't think I want to give up my first round pick just because I, I like having my draft picks <laughs> to use on players that I want. Like, see, Nylander's still got decent trade value, but he is not growing whatsoever. So I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll give him at least another season to grow. Hopefully he'll grow a little bit and become a decent player. Because if he doesn't become a decent player, then I might have to trade him away. Uh, because he's he's got that low elite potential, so he's got that he's got somewhat high of a trade value. So we'll go ahead and scout defenseman now for a month. He's got somewhat high of a trade value, but um, he's not growing. So unless he grows, I'd love to see him grow. So there's our first overtime loss. Okay, so this one's a more interesting trade. Our first Oli Makinen and our uh, Brust for Brassard. 
So maybe, so Makinen, let's see here. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll be able to get away with this trade if I give them a second instead. I like Otto Makinen, not only Makinen, Otto Makinen, because he's growing and he's growing pretty well. So let's see if I can give them a, if I can give them a second and get Derek Broussard, I'd be very happy with that. Uh, but let's see here. I'll throw in my second. That's probably not enough trade value. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and keep going there. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and change the trade block so that teams start offering us some uh, uh, some future goaltenders. Just 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 because I kind of want to uh, get a goaltender of the future because I know Matt Murray. He's going to be around for a while. I think he's going to be our goaltender for this entire sim. Um, but I don't think it would hurt to have a have a goalie like uh, like him. So we want. So apparently we want just defenseman and defenseman defenseman. Let's see. Top, top four defensemen, top six defensemen. Uh, no, we'll leave. We'll leave it. Uh, we'll leave the top four defensemen. We do want second line forwards, but we want goalies as well. Um, so we'll get go ahead and give three stars. That's that's the problem with me. Like they have stars now instead of saying what we want. So I want a younger goaltender. So we'll say under twenty four. Uh, low to high. That's fine. Oops, I just hit reset. Goalie, any, I don't care what his role is. I want him under 25 years old. Uh, 24, that's fine. And then I'll go three stars. So what is three stars? So back up to franchise. Uh, let's actually go fringe starter, starter. So yeah, we want starter potential, goaltending. Uh, young starting potential goaltender. I've never really used the trade block, so uh, it's interesting to see teams actually propose trades to me. It's in, uh, it's kind of fun to not have to make your own trades. Uh, I think the trade deadline is coming up, so if we want to move a guy or acquire a second round, a second line player, uh, now would be the time to do it, which I think is why we're getting all these trade offers. So next year's first, this year's second, and Otto Makinen. I do kind of like that for Broussard, who's a rental player, but... Do we have? Do I want to screw up what we have on this team right now? I'll I'll decline that and see if they want to give me something else. Uh, offer me a better trade. Come on, we got to beat Florida though. We got to get back to actually focusing on games. Okay, we lost in overtime, so we we still did get a point. So they only picked up a point on us, but uh, I would have liked to see another win. Derek Broussard for our first and Otto Makinen. I like Otto Makinen, uh, and I kind of want to keep our first. I think our first is going to be pretty deep though so i did also i gave up our third so we would only have a second round pick but i could probably turn uh, a guy like bogosian or kulikov like i did last year with schuster um oh god it, he'd be like a henrik sedin all over again bringing in henrik sedin and then just tearing it up um 31 he's on an expiring contract He's pretty good all across the board, offensive and defensive awareness. I'd say he's more of a two-way forward. He would take Larson's spot there on that second line. But again, I don't like giving up my first, but for a guy like Broussard, we'll go ahead. Let me go ahead and check out our lines quickly, because this is a trade that's really interesting me. A 3-2 overtime win and then a 3-2 loss. Like, I pressed B on the Flyers game. I don't know why it has to simulate both games. Um, so we're 10 points ahead of uh, Detroit now. So yeah, as much as I'd love to have him uh, up here, like he'd be a second line forward. He'd go right here with Kane and O'Reilly. And then Larson and then Carrier gets the boot probably with his 12 goals and 11 assists. I don't think I need to give up our first. I think our first could actually become something. And it could even, we could even take a late goaltender uh, if we, because I, I think we're a playoff team. I definitely think we're a playoff team. There, yeah, scratch that. There's no doubt we're a playoff team. But the question is, are we going to be one of the top teams? Are we going to go deep again? Or are we going to only, you know, make it two rounds and then get bounced? So again, we're chasing the Capitals. We have two games in hand now. So we let one of them drop. The Capitals, I don't know why the Capitals are just so good. I guess it's Ovi. But they are just going off every every single season. They have a really good makeup, I guess. Uh, Neuwirth's in net. I think we have some more growth from our players because I just see 93-94 uh, as far as... Uh, what overall wise we have. Uh, let's finish out these games strong before the trade deadline. Make, make me not uh, contemplate trading for anybody. 
Toronto, there's a 3-1 loss. Let's see if we can beat a 500 team and uh, can't beat New Jersey either. So it's now three games we've lost. Now there's an overtime win. So these games are, get, are, are closer than they were before. A 5-3 loss. So this team was riding high, and I think we're coming back down to earth now. A 4-2 loss. Do I need to trade for Broussard? 5-2 loss. God, February was not our month. Let's see, we won 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 games, and we lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we went 4, 5, 4, 6, and 2, I think? 5, 6, and 2, something like that. Not what I'd like to see from us. I'd like to see us just take a hold of this and just, just keep going. Uh, I think we'll be okay, though. I don't think I need to make a trade. I don't want to trade away my first just because I don't think we need to acquire a guy like that. If we're gonna, if I'm going to trade away my first, I want it to be a bona fide like, stud, not Broussard. I'll go ahead and check out the um, trade block here, see if... Um, trade block here and see if anybody piques my interest. I know Henrique was on the trade block, but he's probably gone now. Darcy Kemper there as a backup goaltender. Mike Smith. Nope. Derek Roy. Eddie Lack. Nordstrom. No, these aren't guys that I want. I want a, a, I want a bona fide top six player. Pominville. No, none of these guys. Yuri Hoodler is an only an 84. Thomas Bannock. No, thank you. Um, UC Jokinen is an 87 overall. Uh, he's a second line forward, but again, he's only 87. Um... I'm looking for, I don't know what I'm looking for, honestly, <laughs> but uh, I'd like somebody to come in and make an immediate impact. See, a Parento, Eric Carlson's on the trade block? I am speechless. Is there a way I could acquire Eric Carlson? I'd gladly give up my first for a chance at Eric Carlson. That would be a stacked top. Our defense would be amazing. Because uh, look, you would have Risto and uh, what's and um, could, maybe I give away uh, who's t yeah Bogosian. A first in Bogosian for Carlson. That's not going to go through. There's I still have to give up way more. Oh my god, wow. And then maybe this defensive guy, this prospect. No, that's not going to go through. But that would be that would be the kind of trade I'm looking for. Uh, they're way below 500. Yeah, I definitely have to give up more. Maybe next year's second, too. Oh my god. If, if I can get Eric Carlson, this team all of a sudden is just unstoppable. Ooh, okay. So it's closer. I don't think I I would I don't think they'd ever trade away Carlson, but let me see if I can get him. Skaters matching the block. Do they want any of our prospects? Is the question. Otto Makinen. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can give them a guy who's unsigned. I'll give them this brust guy as well. Maybe that puts it over the edge. I still think he alone has way more value than our first or second, uh, Bogosian, Para, and Brust. Okay, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to be getting Eric Carlson, but damn, that was, <laughs> just seeing him on the trade block was like, just frightening. I was I jumped on it immediately. He's still got way too much trade value, and he'll be a free agent this offseason, so if we have the cap space, we might be able to go get him. Maybe that's why they're trying to trade him away. Um, nobody else, though, really piques my interest. That That was just a kind of knee-jerk reaction. Like, let's see if we can go get him kind of trade. Hope I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't get him because he's only got a year left. He'd be an amazing rental player. Like, if you want to rent a player, that's the guy you want to go get. But I don't really think we need him. We have decent players all over. Like, our defensive core is Fowler and Risto, who are an 88 and a 90. But, yes, a 91 overall. Um, Eric Carlson would be nice. Um, okay, then we lost again. So we are... Uh, Something, something is happening. Our, all of a sudden, we can't keep the puck out of the net. Uh, maybe our goaltending is just coming back down to earth. I don't know what it is, but maybe I do need to make that uh, 
Eric Carlson trade and just give up more. I could give up our first because I don't think our first is going to be too valuable anymore. They want I can't believe they want to trade him away. Um I guess I could give up a guy like Fowler, but that wouldn't be make too much sense. But giving up a guy like Foot, maybe I give up a guy like Nylander, but we don't have a lot of forwards who are still decent. So Bogosian, our first. And our second next year. And what about our third next year as well? For a for a rental player? No 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 no. I got I got I gotta relax. Um I'm, I saw. I see the name Eric Carlson, and he's just fantastic. And I all of a sudden want to uh, mortgage the future of our franchise on this one player. So we'll go ahead and keep going here. Keep simulating. Hopefully we can get back on track and not keep losing. There we go. There we go. We're, now we're remembering how to win. Um, thankfully, we built up enough of a cushion where... I don't think I have to worry too much about losing out on the division unless we continue to have that poor, oh my god, now Dmitry Kulikov is hurt. So I'll go ahead and call somebody up. I think this might be Cal Foote's NHL debut. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and call Cal Foot up and see how it turns out. Best player in the system is Cal Foot, so he definitely has earned... He's earned the right to come up and play. He's grown immensely. We'll go ahead and hit best lines here. Keep Gergensen's there on that second line. Cal Foot and McCabe. Now Bean gets a chance to play on the second line. I was just checking out their stats really quickly. We'll go ahead and do best lines down here in the AHL. I'll put in the guys who are scratched Asplund I don't know why Baviv is even playing Otto Makinen so I definitely think I stunted uh, Nylander's growth because I never played him I mean he's tearing it up right now points wise so that's really nice to see oh I think I want to put instead of Zalewski I want to put in Arth Arthur McNeely just because he's got potential so it, our potential guys down here in the AHL are doing pretty well. Brendan Gooley uh, is doing well, uh, growth-wise. He's he's going to be a slower grower than uh, a five-three. There we go, five-three win. A slower growth than Cal Foot. But that's only because Cal Foot is um, just a low elite versus his medium top four. So he's obviously going to grow quicker and better. So there's a loss to New Jersey. Let's see, can we beat Ottawa? We lose. We lose to a terrible Ottawa squad. We'll continue until he um, is fully healthy. I'm going to try and stop the sim here because I think Dmitry Kulikov has probably gained come back from injury. Is he not back from injury yet? I guess he's not. So we'll go ahead and just sim the next game. I definitely think this is a team that can go deep into the playoffs. I mean, we have studs on this team and we got a lot of upper 80 overalls and mid 80 overalls down on the bottom six. 5-3 win. There we go. And Dmitry Kulikov is back. So Jake Bean, or not Jake Bean, Jake Bean is a true bona fide starter now. Um, Cal Foote, and I hope he enjoyed his time here up in the NHL, but I'm going to have to send him back down. Cal Foote, how did he do? Let's see, did he get any points? Yeah, no, he, he had eight shots and was a minus one. So he's, in his brief stint, he didn't do too much. Still hasn't gotten his uh, first NHL point. Let me go ahead and do best lines again. Oh, just when you want specific sets of lines, it just this game can sometimes take a while. Nylander's now up to an 80. I wonder if that's actual natural growth or... Uh, oh, look. Makinen and them are actually... Bryce and Martin. Goodbye. Uh, Kel Foot, welcome back. There we go. Go ahead and go back to the NHL here. Go keep simming. Yeah, it's nice to see that uh, Nylander's finally up to a to an 80 overall. I guess I guess he will take a decent amount of time in real life to become anything. You don't belong down here. You don't, but you do because we don't really have a spot for you. I gotta trade away a guy like 
uh, Bogosian just because he's eating up more salary cap. You know, like we did with Schuster, it was a cap dump. Um, and we got a, you know, we got the Chicago Blackhawks who won the Stanley Cup, I think. I got, we got their uh, first round pick. So there's a 4-3 win now with everybody back. Let's see if we can get on a tear again. 3-1 win, 5-2 loss. Okay, that's all right. Uh, let's see if we can keep winning, keep up the... Keep up. Let's find what we had earlier on in the season. A 5-3 loss. So we are... I'm no longer thinking of us as a uh, President's Trophy team, but I'm praying to God we don't give up the division now. Just because all of a sudden this team decided to shit the bed. We had like... Uh, God. We were doubling up wins to losses and everything. So let's see here. We'll go ahead and check out the standings. I think we're going to clinch the division. Oh, actually, no. We got to keep it up because Otto, or not, Toronto is right behind us. They are creeping up on us fast. I was thinking President's Trophy race, but that's long since gone. Yeah. We're not, we're not even close. We really, we, we were up there. We were the second best team halfway through the year, and then... I don't know if you guys remember season one or season two it was, but or I think it was season one, yeah. We were terrible halfway through, and then now we're then we went on a tear, but now we were amazing, and then we just started dropping games all of a sudden. So two, two, one. So we'll go ahead and scout defenseman for a month. Let's see here. Florida McCabe has been injured with a bruised hand, so let's go call up Cal Foot since he believes he belongs up here. Let's see if he can prove it to me this time. Um, it seems like Reinhardt's up to a 90 now. Eichel hasn't grown, so I hope he hasn't capped at 91. That would be very dis uh, disappointing. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go best lines. Keep Gergensen's on that wing. Go back to the uh, AHL. Best lines down here. Cantonacci, goodbye. Welcome back, Asplund. Uh, Zaluski, goodbye. Welcome back, McNeely. And goodbye, uh, Vave. Uh, welcome back, uh, what's your face? Zyke, uh, I can't, the, the guy I can't say his name. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. We'll put Machin in on the fourth line there. Yep, I, I like that. I like that a lot. And we beat Florida, but we lost to Columbus. So I just like to, we got, uh, this game is going to be huge right here. I just noticed that we play Toronto at the end of the season. Hopefully we build up big enough, a big enough of a cushion that we, we can finish first in the division. There we go, a 6-5 overtime win. So we'll go ahead and simulate up to this game against Toronto. And it happens to be at the Air Canada Center. Come on, a struggling Carolina team. you got to handle them. Get to 50 wins. Come on, 4-1 loss, two, okay, 2-1 two, win. I don't think Toronto can catch us now. I think we've successfully pulled away. Yeah, we went ahead and clinched the division here. We're six points ahead of them, so they did, They kind of tailed off. Team meeting, uh, people want to talk. Let's go ahead, and everyone knows this is a big rivalry, but uh, demanding. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get uh, this season over with. We'll do a brief season recap, and then we will see who we will be playing in the first round of the playoffs. It's kind of nice to not have to worry about making the playoffs, and then we win in a shootout, a solid way to end the season. So, 104 points, not too shabby at all, but I thought we would have been much better considering how we started the season. Our first half of the year was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we ended the season on a good run there, so we came in... Um, Fifth, it looks like, or maybe not. We'll go ahead and simulate just so we can get everyone else up to 82 games played. And the regular season has ended. And who will we be playing in the first round of the playoffs? Gonna be Florida. So they were a pretty good team. They gave us a lot of trouble throughout the season. But I think this team, again, is a team that can handle uh, these good opponents. Florida is there. They weren't too great, but... So where did we end up finishing? We did we dropped a sixth, so it's not that big of a deal. One point. Uh, far as goals per game, yeah, we really tailed off in in goals per game, uh, and then we started letting up a lot more as the season went on. Yeah, so 
Power play percentage was 19.9. Penalty killing percentage was 82.4. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the individual stats. Jack Eichel led the team in points, 78 points in 82 games. Sam Reinhardt also had 78 points in 82 games, and then Kyle Ocposo had 73. So Reinhardt had a much better half of the season than Ocposo did. O'Reilly with 53, Kane with 47, Larson had 40, so he overtook Benino there. Uh, we'll just go forwards here really quickly. Uh, Gergensen's actually on that third line, is doing decent. Uh, Delorier on that fourth line, and Carrier had 17 goals on the fourth line, so we're going to get that depth scoring that you need. Baptiste? Um, like to see him do a little bit better. His shot shooting category is pretty nice, and so are his skating and physical. He is a power forward, though. Uh, 28 points, not too bad for a third-line player. Our fourth line actually did really well here, so I'm glad I put them together. These two guys on the third line. We'll go ahead and see our defenseman here, who did what. Risto led the team in, uh, led defenseman in points, followed by Fowler. Then Bean had 13 goals and one assist. Damn, yeah, that's, I, that's what I thought. He was going to be a good uh, scoring defenseman. So these guys, McCabe had nine points. Cal Foote actually got two NHL points. Um, so yeah, he's still got a little bit of room to grow for us. Goaltending wise, I, I'd expect us to drop off drastically here. Yeah, they had, I mean, it's still great uh, save percentages and whatnot, but goal against average, we, they started letting in lots of goals. I guess our shot suppression was much, much worse. Rookie skaters. Uh, Baptiste, 28 points, so I don't think we're going to have a, a Rookie of the Year on our hands here, but that's fine with me. We'll go ahead and check out the entire league now. Who led the entire league in points? Alex Ovechkin did with, uh, not defenseman. Um, Alex Ovechkin had 95 points. He almost had 60 goals. Oh my god, and then Perry with 92, Getzloff with 87, Patrick Kane had 87, so if you want to know why the Capitals were so dominant this season... Yeah, Ovi is just carrying them. Uh, at 33, though, he's getting towards the end of his rope. Uh, Panarin, Crosby, Eichel is up there. Followed right uh, right next to him is Reinhardt. I don't see uh, McDavid. There's McDavid. He's now a 95. He got He's always a 92, though. Uh, Eichel is now a 91, so he started as an 80, 87. Uh, so that four-point boost is what got him there, but... Uh, Eichel and Reinhardt, this duo right here is one that I'm really happy about uh, for the future. Goals-wise, we know Ovi took home the R Rocket Richard, so we had two 50-goal scorers. We almost had a 60-goal scorer, so there's that. We'll go ahead and go to the defenseman, see who did what. Uh, Points-wise, Drew Doughty is going to take home the James Norris, uh, followed by Suter, Suter uh, Carlson, Eric Carlson here, uh, had a pretty good season for him, goals-wise. We had Oliver ekman Larson with 23 goals, so he's the only defenseman to crack 20 goals. And then who's the Vezina going to go to? Let's see here. Yeah, it's looking like Braden Holtby. Actually, Robin Lanner didn't do too bad, but uh, Dubnik actually might win it. Because he had 70 games played. Yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna be Devin Dubnik. He had 70 games played. He did really well. So the Wild must be the number one seed out in the West. Uh, I I remember seeing St. Louis up there, but we'll go ahead and check out the playoff tree. Some exciting matchups coming. Uh, looking uh, Pittsburgh Rangers. Um, we could play if we make it to the second round. We could play Toronto or the Canadians out west. Uh, yeah, it looks like the Wild were the number one team there. Ooh, uh, Blackhawks versus LA. So this is what the year three playoffs looks like. We'll go ahead and get it started in the next one. Right about now at the top of your screen, you can subscribe and uh, get uh, notifications whenever I post a video right at the top of your screen there. Down in the bottom left is the rest of this playlist. So if you're just joining now or only watched the last couple, you can watch the very beginning if you want and watch all, the entire playlist if you click there. And in the bottom right, it's the best video that's suggested for you. So have a good day, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.